Hello everyone, I'm Brady Briggs with MyMMANews.com. Joining me today is bare knuckle fighter Jeff Chiffins. And now, for people who don't understand, Jeff, I seeked you out after your WBKFF fight where you walked away with a first round knockout. And I couldn't find anything of you. You didn't have a social media, nothing. So I had to type your name in. And this ancestry thing on Google showed me some of your relatives. And there was like 10 of them. So all of them that had Facebook profiles, I sent messages to. And later that day, one of them got back a hold of me. And then about 20 minutes after that, you messaged me. So it's been a while. I'm glad to finally talk to you. How you been? Yeah, man, I'm good, dude. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool, man. You fucking seek me out like that, like. Yeah, that's cool. That was pretty I cool. like you, man. You're a cool dude. Yeah, man. That was fun out there in Wyoming. Um, that was cool, man. Yeah, it was a good show. It sucks all they kind of, you know, they ripped everybody off. They didn't pay. I think Chris Liebman's the only one that got paid, and he got paid half of it because he asked for it up front. That whole show was kind of madness. You know, they only yeah. had two walk songs. You remember that? They didn't play your song. Yeah. They didn't play anybody's. I think the two yeah. were... Mama said, knock you out and go to sleep by Eminem. Those were the two they played. Do you remember that? Yeah, right, right. It was crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, that whole thing was pretty crazy. Yeah. No, I know your background, for, but every for everybody that doesn't, yeah, just tell them what it is, how you got into it. Uh, Yeah, I was just, uh, I kind of fell into it. I was just kind of like, uh, when Bare Knuckle was kind of underground still, um, we were just having fights around my area up in Philly and stuff. And uh, I kind of crossed paths with some, some guys that were making some, making it happen in that shit and that stuff. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, I just uh, got into it that way. Yeah. You know I mean, just, you know I mean? Had, had fight, got paid some money, got a motel room that night. You know what I mean? So I kind of just kind of just came into it. I was going to ask you that. How did you get your shot at beat WBKFFs? Because you knew somebody that was fighting on that card or someone that was promoting it? or Yes. Yeah, yeah, I actually uh, knew uh, one of the promoters for it through the underground thing that was going on. So, uh, yeah, they just needed somebody. They seen me fight before, and uh, they figured I was dumb enough to do it for real cheap. So, you know what I mean? They threw me in there. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like BKFC? It's a lot better than that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's sweet, man. Um, take good care. You know what I mean? Got room, got food, got uh, they pay you. Unlike the other people, they didn't pay, but yeah, they pay, and it, it's fun, man. It's pretty cool, and they're blowing up too, which is yeah, they are cool. it's awesome. I'm so glad it finally came to the states, man. Um, yeah, tell me about it. A lot of people are still considering it a taboo thing, but you know that'll pass. MMA was like that 20 years ago too. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, what UFC, was, all that was bare knuckle before, so. Yeah, sure, it was. Um, what was it like got, the BKB going over to England? What was that? That was cool, stuff? man. I think they got a, a bunch of great fighters out there, man. Like, oh, yeah, they it's do. It's like a good stock of fighters, man. Um, I learned a lot going there. It was cool. Uh, Yeah, hanging out uh in London, never been there. You know what I mean? But uh, I enjoyed it, man. It was pretty cool. What were a couple of things you learned from it? Uh, just fighting wise, just uh, watching some of the fighters, talking to the dude I fought. Uh, Smudger was a tough dude. Um, just I'm just growing as a fighter, man. He just talked to other people, watch things they do, pick up the good, leave the bad, and just uh, being around people like that. You know, what I mean, just you just get better in anything you do. The more you're into it, so yeah appreciated it sure no you haven't fought it's been a few months do you have an idea of when you would like to get back yeah i've been waiting i got an offer to fight like probably a couple weeks after that last fight but i was still healing up i yeah. still uh my hand was a little sore and i i just didn't feel it was time yet but right. within within the month i was ready to go again and uh yeah, I'm still waiting. I heard talk of maybe March, so we'll see. I'm always last to know, so. Yeah, I hear you. Well, you took that Caleb fight on short notice, didn't you? The Caleb Harris fight? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, yeah, a couple weeks, so. Man, that was a war. I want to say yeah, thank, yeah. thank you for that performance. It was so fun to watch. 
I mean, it's kind of hard because you're my friend and I like you, but you know, it was a it was a great fight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, dude, dude's a beast. Yeah, so, he's very good. He had the knockout yeah. of the year before that. The year before. Yeah, I mean, yeah, on, yeah, for sure. I think I could. I would like a rematch would be cool. I think I could do better. Mm. I always feel like I can get better. You know, what I mean, it's like anything. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. do it more. So I learned a few things from him in that fight. Yeah, he's a big just going dude. into the fight and stuff too. Like, there's certain things like I've never done amateur. I've never done anything. I just fought on the street and then did the, the shit like that, stuff like that. So there's like a whole thing like into the fight, like just preparing yourself, getting there, make sure you're eating right food. I got food poison at one of the places. You got to watch what you're doing. Make sure you're getting sleep, surrounding yourself, right people. There's certain things you just pick up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Do you pick up some of that stuff from your teammates? Where do you uh, train? You what, what was it? Must fight boxing? Yeah, I was a must fight boxing. They actually uh, just got to my screen turned on, but uh, I was up there, and they actually uh, they actually moved up to Upper Darby, so I haven't really been there. But I always train. I always have a bag in the backyard. I always yeah. train constantly. It's just something I've always done. You know, what I mean, so it ain't like, yeah, you know I mean. COVID closing the gyms didn't really screw me up because I'm always yeah. either in the woods doing my thing or in the bag, out back, or working. That's good. So, boys. You can teach yourself a good amount of stuff, how punches land, you know, how to turn your knuckles the right way, how to pivot your feet from just a heavy bag. So that's, that's yeah. I'm glad to see you can. Yeah, tons of things. You know, you know, all them old kung fu movies, man, they're doing their thing out there in the woods, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. One thing that I think most fans pick up from your fights is how durable you are. You know, in a sport where glancing shots starch most people, you yeah. have the ability to take so many goddamn punches at the time and not even get dropped. Like, you might get knocked off balance because one of the punches knocks you out. You can tell you're not rocked yet. What do you do yeah. with that to? I and mean, that's just got to be a god given gift, right? Yeah, well, I'm kind of, like, retarded, so it doesn't really, uh, <laughs> it's like, I had a truck land on my head once and kind of walked away the next day. Didn't walk away, but I was pretty speed up, but I don't know, I just always had a hard head, I guess. It's kind of been a blessing and a curse, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm glad you came on all right after that. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, what, when you do have a gym to go to? What does your training consist of? Because I know it's different than traditional boxing or kickboxing or MMA. Uh, my training. I always like to mix it up, but usually a lot of strength. I um, mean, you know, uh, stretching. Things I like to do now: stretching, shadow boxing, uh, hit bag work, uh, dancing around. You know, I mean, basically. Yeah. Just stay moving for as long as I'm there. And, yeah, you know I mean, I don't really lift heavy weights. I don't really lift weights at all. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a roofer, so I lift bundles of shingles and stuff. Yeah, right. and stuff like that keeps yeah. me in shape. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Whatever I feel like doing it today, it's like a lifestyle. It's like you, you go and you play. You're, you're like a kid. You go in and you play with different things when you're there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not rigid on anything particular. Sure. But what weight class would you like to compete at consistently? Because you've taken a couple of them to a couple of different weights, like between 140 and 160, I believe you fought at, right? Yeah, I've never been more than 154. I only weigh 150. I walk around at 154 usually, oh. around 150, 154. So I've taken fights. In England, I think it was 168, and I, I had to go in fully closed shoes, put some weights in my pocket to make 155 at the time. I was actually lighter. I was probably 150. Yeah. So I've always been lighter. The one in Wyoming, I was 154, but I had ankle weights and stuff. I was probably 150. So I'm really like a 150, 155 max, something like that. So, so you don't feel you need to cut weight too much? No, I never had to cut weight. I'm more worried about trying to make the bottom limit of the weight. <laughs> right. Well, I noticed, dude, I noticed Smudger was a big dude compared to you. 
Oh like, yeah, fucking, like that's why that makes sense. Yeah, they're like one sixty eight to one fifty five is the limit they'll let you fight. So I, I had to squeak in right there. So, but there ain't no weight class in the street. I actually think. Yeah. I don't know what you think about it. That they should bring back weigh-ins the day of. I think would be the thing to do. I think that yeah, make I, it interesting. It's not a bad idea. I've had uh, regional kickboxing shows, and they were both uh, weigh-in the same day. I actually liked it because. You know, you don't fight people that are behemoths. Yeah, and it's, there's no, oh, I had to cut this much or do this. You know what I mean? it's I think it'll make people more naturally come in at what they are and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. And, and that's how they used to do it back in the day. It used to be, you know what I mean, a lot closer to the fight. It didn't used so. to be this huge weight cut thing. Like, you see guys in uh, mixed martial arts that go up a weight class, or even in boxing, they go up a weight class, and they do really well. More often than not, they do really well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's healthier. You know, your brain isn't deprived of water, so you're not going to get knocked out as easily. You're more durable. You know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Reverting away from fighting, I know there's something that's very important to you that you try and get off your chest whenever you have the opportunity. That's the truth about 9 11. Give me oh, a yeah. piece on yep. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was one of those, I hate saying like the red pill thing, but like back years ago when I was in the Navy and stuff, someone turned me on. They're like, you know, 9 11 was an inside job. What? You know what I mean? And then I, I looked into it, but I kept an open mind. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, crap, man. They really did blow them buildings up. World Trade Center Building 7 wasn't hit by a plane. Yep. Yeah, I mean, fell straight to the ground, controlled demolition style. And ever since then, I've just always, you know, I mean, tried to push that. Just tell, talk about whatever I could to anybody. Sure. But uh, now it's like, dude, now we got the corona hoax. Now I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, that's like <laughs> 9-11. You know, I mean, this is the new 9-11, the new. Right. You know, that's what I was going to branch into as well as. I think with the 9-11, I even sent you a picture. of The picture says, whoops, this ball went off too early. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you, you seem to remember? And then, yeah, COVID. That's what I'm saying. Like, it sounds like such a U.S. thing to do. It really, yeah. like, as shitty as that sounds, it really does. And it's proven that this isn't dangerous. Unless yeah. you don't take care of yourself or you're really old. Those people can live their yeah. life by restrictions. These people keep getting caught doing this. The, the politicians and all, they keep getting caught doing the shit they tell us not to do. No doubt, like Nancy so, Pelosi and all them uh, get called all the time. Howard, Gavin Newsom, all them. Yeah, how were you feeling? And I think it started in March. What were your thoughts on it right then? And then as it gradually went on? <laughs> yeah, it was like March 13th. Uh, right when it started, I was out there with a picket sign. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> on the road on 202. No doubt. Like, well, I have one that said... Uh, I think one was like they control us with fear, and the other one was fake flu. I uh, always yeah. got the fake flu one, and I've been doing that since day one because anything they push, like this level, this is like a globalist agenda yeah. going on. So, uh, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've been keen of it since the beginning. Yeah, I mean, just because I, I haven't trusted anything that the mainstream pushes. Yeah, so. Yeah, ever since then, I've kind of this whole year has been, yeah, I mean, arguments with people and stuff like that. But I haven't, yeah, it does, I haven't cause, got arguments. It. It does cause arguments having those. Uh, oh, no doubt. I, I got like, it was such a PC world. I actually have a court coming up because I got a menacing charge because I'd walk around. I was telling people about the sheep mask. I had my sheep mask on, telling them, like, you know, I mean, they're all wearing masks and this. And I was just bullshitting, having fun. You know what I mean? Like a terrorist. Yeah. Sheep. Huh? Like a terrorist, I think. Like tall head. Like, that's yeah, like they're sheep, man. Like, yeah. like the people wearing the oh, mask, man. Sheep minded. Okay, I get it. Sheep minded. Yes, exactly. And I was just wearing a mask and I got in trouble for it. I mean, like, you can't even protest this stuff anymore. I believe it. I know, dude. They, they, uh, what was it? Uh, ben. Donald Trump's social media when he was trying to speak all about the voters in Wisconsin. Oh, there was more votes than there were registered voters. Exactly. They, like, so they can't be heard. They know damn well they're doing it dirty. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trying to silence people because they know people are going to stick up for them. But yeah, I like exactly. your, uh, what is it, that little slogan? The fake flu. Because you know fake what flu. I said about it? <laughs> I said, 
I didn't never see people wearing masks when they got the flu or pneumonia. Or, and those, both of those things are proven to be more dangerous, dude. And I never remember seeing no one wear a mask. It sure as hell wasn't mandatory. Right. You know what I mean? So it's funny how you say that because I thought the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I remember be, I ride the bus a lot before I, I lost my license for a little while and I got it back. But I would ride the, bike, the bus. And um, the only people you'd see with the mask would be like an Asian person. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, everyone thought that was odd. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it is still odd. You know what I mean? It's just that, like, that a globalist think tank pushed it over here, to, mm-hmm. and now we're doing it. You know what I mean? And it, it's insanity. It's really yeah. control. It has nothing to do with helping anybody. I mean, you know what I find funny about it is I posted a video on my YouTube channel called Why Other Countries Hate Us So Much. Uh-huh. I just realized about a week ago that it was taken down. Really? All, yeah, there's also you, all the Denver airport stuff. You can't find any of those documentaries on YouTube. Oh, all the, of the crazy paintings yeah. and stuff. Like, I'm not going to title this interview anything like that, because if yeah. I do, it would probably get taken down. But I think this should stay up, us talking about it, because I'm going to title it something different. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like guerrilla radio now, man. We got to be oh, like... <laughs> I feel like the U.S. might downsize, man, to be honest with you. Maybe this is the start of it. Maybe it's not. But in the next 200 years, I'm sure of it. Yeah, right. That's cool, though, man. I, I, that's what I like about you, man. You, you keep open mind, man. You're smart, dude. <laughs> I try to. Yeah, <laughs> man. I to. Um, this is a little bit different of a question, but what kind of music do you listen to? What kind of music? Um, I'm all over the board, dude. Uh. Yeah, uh, my favorite band all time, Typo Negative. Uh, I like everything: The Doors, Johnny Cash. Uh, I like some some Kanye. I like Mac Miller. I like uh, Bones. I like I do. I like tons. Sade. Yeah. Uh, I'm just it's everywhere with music, man. Is that how you are? Like just everywhere, right? Like, I like metal and hard rock mostly. Metal? But yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, fuck, I forgot that. Oh, yeah. Wasn't Typo Negative the band that you tried to get your walkout song for WBKFF? Didn't you say that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to have it. The song. Actually, I thought it was Typo Negative. I could have swore. Yeah, it was Typo Negative. I forget which one now because I'm. Uh, it was a couple years ago. Slow. But, uh,. Yeah, I actually got to walk out to them at BKFC last one out of the fire. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I can only imagine how annoying it must be. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't impact the fight. But if I'm fighting, dude, I want to hear my song before I walk out, you know? Right, right. right. It's kind of fucked. Yeah, I was hyped, dude. They let me walk out. I had the sheep mask on and the 9-11 inside. Yeah, that's, I sure. love how they let you promote that on your uh, yeah. gear. It's yeah. awesome. Dave and all of them, they're cool with that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. I like Dave Feldman. I was uh, talking to Brandon Lambert earlier, actually, and we were talking about who could have do Dave Feldman. I'm very glad that he is the one that's in charge of the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. He's a yeah, really yeah. good president. He's moral. Yeah. Yep. What kind of movies do you like? Uh, I don't watch much movies, but the last one I did watch was They Live with Roddy Roddy Piper. Pink Floyd, The Wall, stuff. Um, yeah. I like movies at Fight Club. Obviously, everyone loves that one. I like thinking weird shit, stuff like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Watch much TV? No. Fights? More like into podcasts and oh, stuff okay. like what that. Oh, okay. What kind of podcast do you like? I like podcasts, too. Uh, I always watch Jesse Lee Peterson's show. That's a good one. Uh podcast uh geez uh david knight show he was on info wars and then he got booted and uh yes yeah, there's two main ones i really follow now mostly you know i mean between work and working out and stuff like that so i get sometimes chill and listen to stuff but those are the ones i really listen to right now yeah i agree how much do you usually get in when you don't have a fight coming up like workout Type oh, I always I work out as soon as I get to work. I get to work at six thirty, 
I stretch and work out a little bit for like a half hour before the day starts. And then uh, when I get home, I'll work out maybe for like, depending if I, if it's nice out right now, we got snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't go out and hit the bag and stuff, but it's pretty cold out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It's like this week was fuck horrible, dude. It was what? like 20. I know 20 degrees ain't nothing to some people. It's cold, man. But, That's one yeah. reason I moved. Yeah, I was up in New York. I moved on to Virginia. That's one of the reasons. Nice. It still gets too cold here. It's not my last stop. But it's yeah, much yeah. you're making your way down south, dude. Yeah. You'll <laughs> totally be sure. in Florida soon enough. Yeah, buddy. That is where Florida's I would like to end up. I like Florida. Dude, and the, 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 the dude running the joint down there, the governor, He's pretty cool. He's not like with he's all the code. Yeah, he doesn't crap. close everything down, you know? Yeah, he understands you got to go to make money and survive. You got to go to work. People got to do stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? He's the one that initially so, let the UFC come back too. The first three of yeah, them after COVID, Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, tight. Yes. Hey, man, that might be the spot where all of us uh, like-minded people start rolling to. Cause yeah, pretty, right? You know I mean, so cool. normally it's like young people, a couple years younger than me that just want to party or old people that move there to retire. But yeah, that would be cool if, you know, some like minded people would go there. We got like alligators in their backyard and lizards and scorpions in their backyard. dude. That's yeah, awesome. Right. Uh, that'd be like all kinds of crazy stuff. Like we don't got that out here, like no, in the man. woods, like PA and Delaware. I don't got to worry about frogs. nothing like that. What's that? <laughs> Might find some frogs sometimes. Yeah, right. Some frogs, just some box turtles, but no, nothing that's going to eat you or your dog. Yeah, right. Like, there's a whole nother level you got to be on. <laughs> Man, I love it. Well, yeah, right. Have you ever been to Florida? Or have you ever been out traveling aside from fighting? Uh, when I was a little kid, I went to Florida, but it was like way, I was way young. So yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get to see too much of it, but. Yeah, besides, I went to Miami for this last fight. That was cool. I got to jump in the water there. Oh, uh, that was pretty cool. But I, I haven't really explored much down there. Yeah, I haven't either since I was young. My mom used to take me down to see my grandpa until he died when I was nine. Um, so you're in Delaware and I'm in Virginia now. I remember telling you that when I got a car, I was going to come see you and we were going to hang out. I forgot yeah. about it until right now. I have a car. <laughs> So oh, nice. I'm going to come and see you. Yeah, man. Look, shh, roll on through. I got a spot now, man. I've been hopping all over, man. So yeah. I finally got – I got roommates, but I got a spot, man. You can sleep on the couch or whatever, you know what I mean? Awesome. That'd be dope. <laughs> you know? Who was it, by the way, that told you that I was trying to talk to you? Was it your mother or was it your sister? I can't – I want to say it was my mom. Yeah, it was one or the other. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure. Was I the only one that reached out? Did anybody else try and talk to you after your fight? Yeah, nobody really wanted to talk to the weird, the weird homeless looking dude. <laughs> dude, it caught my attention, man. To be honest with you, I was like, I have to meet this dude. Like, yeah. I have to. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of fighters, man. Like, I haven't had that awfully many interviews, but since I started watching back when MySpace was still a thing, and when Facebook was, yeah. I would message fighters all the time. And some of them messaged back, some of them wouldn't. So I, would, yeah. I talked to many, many of them over the course of like the second half of my life so far. And you yeah. are very excited. So yeah. it's, hey, it's I'm, different. Right? Wait, wait till next fight, man. It's going to be dope. I'm ready, dude. All right. I can't <laughs> wait, man. It's going to be awesome. Do you have a name in mind? Uh, I don't know. I know the roster isn't too deep right now, but yeah, I'm not. He said the name. I don't know if he's coming up from toe the line Randy or Lambert? if I'm going there. I can't really remember the dude's name. You said I said it right. What is it? Brandon Lambert. I don't believe so. If it is, hey, I think that's the only up? one I said. Uh, yeah. In this interview. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm waiting on. Is he a 45er? I think he's, I don't know. They know my weight's like 150, 155. So whoever it is, I don't really know yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably find out like a week before, but if it happens, so you, you know what I mean? You're always the last one to find out. So does it pretty much, is it a done deal before you sign the contract usually? Oh, uh, they usually just tell me, hey, here's the opponent. 
uh, yeah, I mean, can you do it? Blah, blah, blah. Or I'm usually bugging them. Like, I really don't care who it is. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, so I just want to fight. I just like fighting. I like, you know I mean? The whole aspect of it. And the more I learn about it, the more I like it. Yeah, so. I hear you. Especially bare knuckle, man. It seems like it would fit someone like you really well. Because yeah, it's know, pretty cool. Someone who comes from a street background, you know, they're not going to want to wear these giant gloves. You know, the accuracy is different. The defense is different. You yeah, know, totally. Probably not going to want to grapple because that's not generally what happens in street. Yeah. Fight. They're going to want to stand and box. Yep. And that's, you know, for real. it's a sport yeah. for you, man. Yeah, hey, man. You should do it at the bars or on the street, man. You didn't even get paid. Yeah, no, you get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, for your WBKFF fight, you were supposed to get one to show and one to win, right? 1,000? Yeah. 1,000? Yep. 1, yep. Yeah, it never happened, but hey, man. It's too bad. It was fun. They get I, opportunity. Dude, yeah, and I got food, man, and a trip to Wyoming. Me and my buddy, Bud. Uh, man, we had, a, we, had a fuck, we had a blast, man. That's awesome. Staying in. Yeah, man, it was cool. Is it the best experience of your life to that point up there? Uh, one of them. Up until today is pretty good day to day, man. So, <laughs> yeah. But man, I'm glad we finally got to do this. It is yeah, me too, time. brother. I, I really did. appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I'm sorry, what? Oh, I had to turn that off. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad I got to talk to you too, man. Yeah, no worries. I'm going to get a hold of you soon. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you, buddy. All right, brother. Be safe, man. Actually, don't be safe. Be dangerous. I hate that safe shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> you too, buddy. Have a good All right, brother. Peace.